Hello and welcome to Northwest Knitting. My name is Kathy and this is the 14th episode of my knitting podcast. This is where I talk about my journey to create a more sustainable, um, crafty wardrobe for myself. And I'm having a lot of fun doing it and um, your participation really makes it extra special for me. So thanks so much for watching. And, um, oh, I want to tell you about my last episode, episode 13. I made a mistake with that one. And um, I, published an, I published it and um, quickly discovered that I had published the wrong um, recording. Usually this takes me a couple of tries. Sometimes I go all the way through and I just put it out there, but usually it takes me at least one or two and last time three tries because there's something I omitted or um, later I might not like the lighting, which is a kind way of saying I didn't like how I looked. <laughs> and last episode there was, um, I had talked about some um, yarn and as I got ready to, um, as I was doing the background research with links, I discovered there were some things that I had not said that I felt wouldn't be fair. So um, I redid it and every time I do it, it's a little bit different. I'm, I'm not memorizing this. I'm not an actress here. I'm just talking about things and even though I might be on one track as I'm starting out, um, I might find myself veering off or forgetting some things and they're not uh, momentous. <laughs> and hopefully I will circle around back to them and some later podcast. So anyway, I really apologize for anybody who, if you were one of the 100 and 50 something viewers who watched that podcast. Um, I don't think you missed too much, but you might go back and look at the show notes that I eventually did. And um, um, also there were probably a number of people who saw that I had published and then didn't find anything there while I was in the transition. So for all of that, I'm really sorry. And I will try and be more organized on how I um, store my video. So um, anyway, here we are back again. I am inside my little um, studio barn. I call it a barn because it's shaped like a barn on the outside. Um, and um, it was fun to record outside, but um, now it's just it's getting a little chilly and the weather's changed. So we're back inside here. Um, we've had in some ways a great fall um, and I've loved the changing of the seasons. This is my favorite time of year, but a lot of it we had smoke where we couldn't go outside. So it wasn't every day um, and it wasn't all day, but there were many days where I went ready, I was ready to go work in the garden or go for a walk. And it was just way, way too smoky from the forest fires. So, um, however, now it has begun to rain and we are usually at the end of October. This is when our rain starts and it's not raining every day. Uh, but the weather has chilled down and um, it is very dark here until about 7.30 in the morning. So um, I think we will be ready to fall back. I don't like springing forward, but I do like fall falling back because it's nice to be a little lighter in the morning when you wake up. So I hope you're all having a good, good fall. I can see that there's some really gorgeous pictures on 
Instagram and with the fall festivals and so forth. It, it's been fun to see people's changing clothes and, and uh, getting into the, the cooler weather. So I have a couple things to tell you about. Um, I did go to Oregon Flock and Fiber and that was so much fun. Um, one of my viewers who I happen to know um, who raises sheep offered to go with me and I ended up, uh, she drove with uh, me and three other spinners. No, I'm not a spinner, but three spinners and she probably spins too. And um, it was really wonderful. A lovely group of people. I'm not a spinner, but my head was full of hearing about plies by the time the day was over. Um, and I had um, a lovely time at the festival, at the fair itself. Um, I met a number of people um, that were, one is I, um, I just sat down at lunchtime with a woman named Alicia from Portland and I hope she watches this because um, I've been kicking myself for not um, exchanging emails or phone numbers or something because she she and I had so much to talk about and watch all the same podcasts and could say oh Kia's bored I love her <laughs> um, so and then we looked at the sheep and the goats together so that was very fun and um there were some really um there were interesting conversations um i think if you ever go to one of these be sure and wear something knitted because i did i i wore um a shawl and i uh, it was cool in the in the morning so i wore a short sleeved um knitted my Trelawney top and I wore a shawl over it and I got comments on all of those and that started conversations with people and um, I um, some people did do that but I really urge you to do that kind of thing because it gets it gets some good um, communication going with other knitters um, I had a wonderful conversation with a spinner about body image, being older, and sort of the way we look at ourselves, and that was really interesting. I had a great conversation with Naomi in the gallery where she was showing me all the prize winners. Um, there was competitions for knitting. Um, and I'm hoping that I can figure out how to put some footage on here that will show um, some of the prize winners. Anyway, um, I went to the booth for Wildflower Farm and um, I had purchased some skeins of this Gotland yarn from them at um, Black Sheep back in the um, early summer. And this is yarn from Mr. Big, a Gotland sheep. And they're down in Talent, um, or at, yeah, Talent, Oregon. And I had a really nice conversation with her and bought more of Mr. Big, so now I have enough for a sweater. It's not soft yarn, really, it's a, it's a, it's a bit coarse really, but it's also, it's like soft and coarse and scratchy, but I love how it is and I'll use it for some outerwear and having three skeins wasn't very useful, but now I have enough either to do a long vest or, um, or a uh, sweater and, um, then I had some, I had some other nice communications with people that I, I hope to work in a little bit later. So um, anyway, a good thing to do if you have a chance to go even to some of the smaller festivals 
it's awfully fun. Um, I, if this wasn't the kind of thing where I felt like I needed to go back the next day, but I might have felt like that if I um, had taken classes or if I were a spinner. Because there was a lot of um, roving there, and um, two of the people I was with bought a fleece of lamb's wool to share, and I got to put my hands in that. And oh my gosh, it was just so soft and curly and everything. Um, and um, there was actually a surprising number uh, amount of. Um, superwash yarn which um, probably doesn't come from around here <laughs> and beautiful colors beautiful dyeing but since i'm kind of i'm not going that way and i'm not spinning um there were a very manageable number of booths for me to look at so it was really great and um by the time i got home i was practically catatonic. <laughs> I could hardly talk because I had just talked for a very long time. So very, very fun. And um, I look forward to doing more of them. I will say that of the, um, of these events that I've gone to, I really do like the ones where you can go out to the barn and see the sheep um, as compared to the urban ones. I think those tend to have, um, I think the um, urban ones don't have as much of the yarn from the very small farms. What we were missing was maybe the, um, you know, there weren't, there isn't going to be like Garth and Orr is not going to come to Oregon flock and fiber. These are all small places and um, all the ones I mentioned um, don't, even um i don't even think they sell online so um if if i can find more info than i was able to initially on that i'll let you know but um they're really small and i feel like you're buying something very very precious and you're supporting those small five farmers who then may go on to um, be able to sell to a, a wider audience but um, anyway, very, very fun. So I have a couple, um, I have an old object that I did a while ago, and then I have a couple um, new things. Um, but most of the last three weeks, I have been, um, I took a little class, online class that I signed up for ages ago on cabling. So now I really want to do some cabling. And for me, it was not so much that I didn't know how to do the cable, but how to um, reading the charts. And I still need a lot of work on that. Um, so that was fun. Another thing I've done is I discovered the episodes of Miss Evil Knits is her um, blog and on Instagram she's Evil Knits and um, she has a series right now it's actually over she I think she finished recording it at the beginning of the year but it's called On Creativity and she talks about creativity as regards to knitting and this craft of knitting and she talks a lot some of the basics about um, um, how to figure out what you want what you need in your wardrobe and um, she also does some de designing and talks about um, that um, and she said and on her um, episodes and on her blog she has recipes for th some things um some garments and some accessories so i'm really enjoying that it's kind of a slow thoughtful process and i'm sure i will mention it again so anyway that's been going on and also i had three days of dental hell <laughs> 
which I won't go into much detail, but I have a 25 year old implant that's very healthy, but a screw came loose. So if you've wondered if I have a screw loose, you were correct. I did. <laughs> they had ordered the screw because it's 25 years old and I had a lot of discomfort with the exposed when everything was exposed. And finally that's resolved. The pain's resolved, but not the um, ultimate um, problem. So I'm still waiting for this screw to come in. <laughs> but anyway, there, so there were distractions and babies to visit and all that kind of thing. Anyway, okay. Um, let me talk about this first. This is a very familiar garment to you, but I don't believe I've shown it here. I'm wearing it because it goes so well with the shawl. That is my new finished object. But let me tell you about this one first. This, of course, is the Felix Pullover by Amy Christopher's of Savory Knitting and um, definitely a fabulous um, project. If you're looking for something to knit on bigger needles, and um, it's very satisfying. Um, so let me show you. The distinctive thing about these is, of course, the um, um, increases by doing the yarn overs. And they're in the front, both here and in the back. And I did a... Um, and I did not modify this in any way except to add my extra stitches here. Um, so I really like it. It um, I like I like how long I made it, and I I actually have even thought of making some of my sweaters longer. Um, but anyway, I'm very happy with this one. I like the collar, um, the neckline on this. Um, is one of the best fits I have with the back not being too, you know, the, the short rows really work to give me the space here and not um, in the back. So I've been, I've been pretty happy with this one. This is, I knit out of uh, Let Lopi and I do not remember the colorway. Um, as you can see, it's purple. <laughs> it's, um, yeah, it's, it's a really nice kind of a heathery purple. It's got quite a bit of blue in it, which is where I lean. Um, and, um, you know, if you've, most people have knit with Let Lopi. I'm sure I knit this on probably size nine needles and she might say she might recommend 10 but when I got gauge with size nines and it's a fairly quick knit because you you've got big yarn you've got big needles um, um, this would be fabulous with a fingering weight and mohair held together um, and I I, uh, the only thing I would say about this, this is my second Let Lopi sweater, and I find that my other one, which was in gray, two colors of gray with a little blue, that one has softened up more for me than this color. I feel like, um, I don't know if it's the dye, and I'd like to hear from other people um, as to whether they think that some of the um, shades of Let Lopi are softer than others. But, you know, I'm, I'm real happy with it and um, I'm definitely gonna use Let Lopi again. So it's, um, but if you're looking for something really soft, of course, if you've, you know, you, this, is, this is not soft. Um, and um, I do tend to wear my cardigan out of Let Lopi way, um, more than this, but it's a good, um, really nice winter um, um, pattern, and um, I could really see myself making another Felix cardigan or pullover. So the cardigan, uh, which I talk about um, in some of the early episodes, I did with um, 
sport weight, 100% alpaca, and then held with a strand of mohair. And wow, that is soft. Um, and the mohair holds the um, alpaca a, a little tighter than it would be. Um, so anyway, both of them are really great and I enjoy them a lot. But my finished object for the day, <coughs> my big one, is I finished my cape lookout shawl by Lindsay Fowler. And hopefully that looks really clear to you. Um, this side is only a single strand of um, Jagger spun Heather and I think it the lace shows up a lot better against this dark here so this is the single strand and as you're knitting along when you get to the center spine you add a strand of mohair and in my case I held Rowan Kid Silk Haze together and it is very, very yummy together. So, um, kind of, I've never done this kind of thing where I, I split it. And I have to say my inclination was not to. And then I thought, oh, Kathy, just go with the program here and see what happens. So I do like it. And I can imagine that. There are times where I'll, I'll have one more prominent than the other. Um, and um, this, I had never knit with this um, uh, Jagger spun. And it does, um, I really liked it. I'd like to try it. So, so um, I use size six needles, which I believe is um she does have you knit at a looser gauge actually um, i'm gonna just pause it for a minute and see if i can find that out exactly okay so i did just check it and the gauge is about um 19.5 um stitches per four inches or 10 centimeters. Um, so that's about five stitches to an inch. Um, so it felt um, more um, not so loose here, obviously, because I had the mohair mixed with it, but this felt very, very airy and open. And um, I'd like to try the um, the Heather spun, excuse me, the Jagger spun Heather um, at a tighter gauge just to see what it's like. It's um, um, it's not. I don't even know why we bother talking about softness sometimes, but it's so personal. Um, I've had yarns that I thought were very, very soft and other people are like, oh my God, I can't handle it. So very personal. But um, to me, this is not like, it feels totally fine up around my neck. Um, but it's, um, I think it, to me, the, the um, it feels a little thinner even maybe than Jameson and Smith. So it's called fingering, but I, I think I'd be inclined to say it's a, a light fingering. Um, but it would be fun to you. I actually have quite a bit left. So, um, of both of these. So here's the Jagger spun in the wisteria color. And here is the, um, Rowan Kid Silk Haze in the, um, dewberry color and they're just gorgeous so I at least should make a hat I think out of these or incorporate them into another shawl 
um, I hope I, I really, they just feel very precious and I'd love to use them in something nice and hope they don't languish somewhere. But anyway, so this is very fun. Um, it's a triangle shawl. I will probably wear it a lot like this. Um, the only thing about it is I might have liked it to be a little longer here, but this, this is plenty. And often, if it's really cold, I'll tie it under here. So it'll be, it'll be nice. It actually, I could see this using this a lot in the summer because it is so lightweight and I was really craving this just super light shawl that you can stick into a bag and pull it out. And it's great when there's too much AC or it's, you're sitting out late or something, you know. So um, one thing that I had trouble with, and I actually had found how to resolve it, and I, I thought, and I tried to, and um, I should have fiddled around a little bit more with uh, practicing before, because I ended up just doing what the pattern said. But I might have on these edges, you know, you're creating a, a little bit of an I-cord edge. Um, oops. Um, it can get really tight. You know, just not as much give right there um, as you, you might want to have. And so I have seen people um, stick in a, um, after they knit the first two stitches, stick in a, um, yarn over and I was doing that and then I think I was also doing it on the second side well you wouldn't do it that you would only do it um only do it on one side because then I was I was getting too much space and I thought gee this looks funky and so anyway I need to work on that a little bit more on how I do my edges because I feel like I blocked it fairly aggressively because of the lace. So I use blocking wires and uh, really got it straight. It's very straight across. And I did not see a schematic. Um, and I'm a big fan of very, very explicit schematic schematics and not just a little sketch so but that's the only thing I would say that um, I would have been on my wish list so anyway this has been a real joy the yarn was fun to work with I love the pattern I love the lacy ending there and um, it's lacy but not too lacy you know it's just a oh, very very fun and once I solved my lace problem by um, getting my chart squared away, I talked to you last time about how I um, hadn't seen the blocked in part on the um, pattern. It's a little light in the book. And I think in that case, that's when you copy it and you go over it just to make sure you're not gonna lose that um, pattern repeat um, and I think that's all I can say couldn't do the lace without markers marking that repeat that just is no I wouldn't be able to do it um, so anyway very very happy with it and um, the only thing I kind of wish I had done it earlier in the um, I wish I had done it in the summer because this is what I was wanting. This very, I wanted a lighter color, lighter weight. So anyway, there's more patterns in that salt and timber that I'm um, looking at, as well as in the um, the last, not the last one, but um, Lindsay Fowler, the author of 
the designer of this um, magazine, of this shawl and um, of Salt and Timber, the book, is um, going to do a release of a pattern she did for Lina Magazine. I think she's just released it and it's called Vespertine Sweater and I really liked how the um, she used ribbing on that. Um, so you might check that out. So I'll put a link to that pattern and also to the Salt and Timber book. So, okay. Another thing that I, I showed you la last time or the time before that I had finished my um, um, Ellen's Coming Home set by Petite Knit. This is um, for the new baby. And I had finished this, but without the buttons. So now it has the buttons on it. And it has a cute, cute little pair of pants. That I've, I've never made pants before. <laughs> and it has a fold over um, um, edge right here. And then you put... Um, elastic in here so that is really cute and a fun experience I have no idea when this baby is gonna fit into this because she's so so tiny she's just getting out of getting into newborn size from preemie size clothes so I'm hoping that by January or February she can wear her little outfit here. Um, the other thing is uh, the pattern includes a hat, a little bonnet. So I'm either going to make that bonnet or the, um, there's a tin can knits bonnet that I'm looking at. So I'll, I'll probably have that by next time and I'll show you that. So, is there anything else I have finished? No, but I'll tell you what I'm thinking about. Last time I talked to you about um, the Pressed Flowers Cardigan by Amy Christophers. Amy Christophers again here. And I think the last episode I had Amy Christophers. So I think I definitely have made more of hers than anybody's. Um, I just got this new bag. You're not going to be seeing tons of bags from me because I don't have tons of whips, really. But this one I just got at my local yarn store. And now I don't have the card for it. I think it's called Pure Whimsy, but I really like that cheerful print. I'm looking for cheer, especially this time of year. So, the Amy... Let's see, Amy Christopher's Pressed Flowers cardigan is, she uses the pattern from her Pressed Flowers shawl. And that's the sweater. And you can see from the way she's wearing it, it's very straight and has a drop shoulder. And I'm sure she did that um, to accommodate all these cute little flowers that to uh, make it simpler. So the, the flatter it is, I would assume it's just easier to get all those flowers in there. So um, I did a swatch and I actually found swatching using the, um, the, the pattern, the recipe for the design, a little bit challenging, partly because you, you're, um, you're having to switch fairly quickly and do something different. Whereas if you're knitting it, you know, you do a whole long row and then you switch to the next one. Um, so I had, I feel like it's a little bit of a mess, but here, here it is. Oh, it looks so different. This is so funny. It looks so different on the camera. Unbelievable. 
Okay, so what I'm seeing is a much darker, much less contrasty. Um, isn't that funny? So here is my main yarn, and it is much, um, wow, it's so much darker than the camera. The camera's showing it to be almost a medium gray. It's really a very dark gray, and it's called, it's lichen and lace rustic sport, and the color is coal. So rustic heather sport, and it's 100% Canadian wool. And um, it, um, they use a number of different breeds of sheep. And next time, I'm hoping I will go forth with this and um, be able to tell you more about the um, lichen and lace. But it's um, 216 yards in each skein. So here's the here's the skeins. They have a nice little um, cute little uh, packaging thing there, and um, it is a woolen spun single ply. So um, hopefully that will be okay. I think it will. I've heard um, some good reviews on Ravelry, and I love how, this is the yarn that Amy Christopher's used for her Lunenburg pullover. So she just used this, and, um, and a lot of people consequently did use this. I haven't heard any problem with it being single ply um, in terms of sturdiness, so um, that's what I'm going to do. So what caught me onto the lichen and lace, I had this lichen and lace in my stash from about a year ago, and this is the color frost. Okay. And I like it. Um, it feels, um, so I got enough for a sweater and so it's this still could be a sweater I thought I would use this with the coal and that's why I ordered the lichen and lace and I don't know about you but a lot of my purchases go in that way can you tell like I have the mr. big Gotland yarn only have three skeins have to go back buy more skeins lichen and lace oh i need the lichen and lace to match i buy more lichen and lace then i don't use this one i don't think i'm using this even though i really like it and there would be something nice about using a pure lichen and lace contrast color because then the whole sweater would be cohesive in that way but that's that's too classy i guess for me or something so i am using um my entropy dk so i showed you these before this is the one i've used so far and then i have two of these here and obviously this lighter color at times will really really contrast and i haven't quite figured out how to do that and then I, I wonder about the sleeves, because wouldn't it be nice if both sleeves started maybe with a similar color? And how do you do that? I don't know. Um, this is technically would be enough yarn um, for the contrast color, because the Entropy actually has quite a bit of yardage to it. It's um, 260 yards, hand dyed. 100% blue-faced Lester wool in the this is the colorway event horizon and these this colorway over here is do I have a colorway no 
I do not know, but it's, I do believe it's a different. I think these two are the same and this one is a different one. Um, but like it's similar to spin cycle in that the color variations really are tremendous. There's a lot of variation from skein to skein, so they're not going to be identical. This is way less expensive than spin cycle. And it does have a lot of really um, good variation in it. Very fun. So anyway, I did this swatch and I washed it and oh my goodness, St. Catherine of the little flower. <laughs> But, um, so I'm getting Gage with this. It's a pretty, um, it's, um, it's kind of, a, it's a nice looser gauge. It would make, I think, a fairly lightweight sweater, which is all to the good, because that is what I am looking for. I'm finding, um, that my very, you know, more densely um, knitted sweaters I don't reach for, I don't feel as comfortable in. This one is let lopey, could be knit in a very dense way, but it, this one is knit on size nines. It's very, very comfortable. Um, okay, and now I'm trying to see what she recommends here on. Okay, so she... Wow. Okay. Okay, here we go. I printed double-sided and I can't find anything. Um, so this calls for, okay, a gauge of 24 stitches. So that is what is happening here. And I'm using, I started out with the size she recommends, which is size five. And for me, that got gauge. So that doesn't always happen. But I was trying very hard to, um, I was trying hard not to knit too tightly because it seemed like whenever you've got this color, Things could go awry here with too much tension. This, but this is mosaic. It is not um, stranded. It is mosaic. And so this is all accomplished with slip stitches. So really fun. Um, you know, I debated on whether I wanted to do the shawl. Now there's a hat that's out. And I'm pretty sure she's also going to do a pullover with this so i would assume the pullover would also be a um dropped shoulder um arrangement i'm kind of happy that this is a uh, for me this is kind of a looser lighter um fabric because when you when you get down to the drops shoulder you don't to me it's just nicer to work on um on uh, something lighter it makes the joining all nicer and everything so anyway that's the plan but i haven't gotten very far um being distracted by numerous things partly that um okay oh my gosh where am i i think i have talked about most everything. I, ha I think of so many things to tell you. Um, one is, oh, just to go back to Miss Evil Knits. Um, uh, she has, you know, I, I mentioned that she has a number of recipes. She doesn't put them on Ravelry. Well, she might put them on Ravelry, but mostly her intention is that these are recipes. And that you, so she's not giving pattern support. She's not charging 
for them and she's expecting you to um, fiddle around and make your own changes and so forth. And one of the things that she has is a um, cowl that is similar to the Pearl Soho bandana cowl that everybody is talking about again. That is an old, the bandana cowl is an old recipe um, by Pearl Soho. It's free and a lot of people have rediscovered it. Um, last winter, I discovered it and it was old then, I think, or it had been out for a number of years. And I made a couple of those um, cows for gift items and I really liked it. But um, there are two other ones that I have, I'm also thinking of because um, I like things to really be, when it's cold and I'm outside, I really want my neck covered. So either I could do an infinity cowl and wrap it twice so it's tight, or um, mostly I'm using a shawl um, because I can have complete control over it. <laughs> Open it up, close it up, whatever. But um, she has a pattern that is very similar to the bandana cowl um, in that it's, you know, not, it doesn't use a lot of yardage. You pop it over your head and it's done. And that's really nice. But on hers, the neck is tighter. Um, and she does that by doing a garter stitch, uh, a garter tab for the beginning and creating this space. And then after she has the beginning, then you join in the round. So it creates an interesting shape. It's a little bit more, um, um, has a little bit more of a, um, um, okay, I speak English. What's the problem? It has more of a slant to it. So it's tighter here, but slants down and it fits really nicely over here. So you might want to look at that. She calls it the lagum, lagom, lag lagum cowl and I'll put the link below to her um, recipe for that but you also I really you might really find her interesting to look at her um, uh, podcasts on that the other thing there's another one that I have looked at I think I made it for someone else or I got into it and decided I was using the wrong yarn, but that's an, um, a pattern and it's at least a couple years old by Espace Tricot, one of their many free patterns, and it's called Getting Closer or Getting Warmer. I think it's Getting Warmer and that's another one where it's tighter up here and then it, it, it um, changes here. So um, anyway, I, in the spirit of what um, Evil Knits is doing. I think her name is Anna Lee. Um, I got out some yarn and I started working on it and quickly thought, oh, I was using a yarn that's pretty heavy, maybe like um, definitely at least worsted, maybe even a little heavier. I like the color. I didn't want to break into any of my yarns that I have. Um, have a, that have a sweater sweaters quantity um, so I was looking for some single skeins and this one would be great but um, I, I have gotten used to knitting in smaller I, I do like more the smaller needles and a kind of a, a lighter thing and not quite so um, heavy so I ripped it out. Um, it's all in garter to her patterns in garter stitch. I ripped it out to make more of it, um, except the edges. I made the, um, the bulk of it to be um, a um, stockinette. And I'm still not happy. So I, I either need to go with bigger needles or maybe just go look for some yarn that's a little lighter. There's no reason why you couldn't use any kind of yarn at all. Um, she, one thing about her, um, Evil Knits, is that she knits almost exclusively with Newtoden yarn. And 
This is a yarn I haven't gotten my hands on. Of course, I have heard all about it and everybody raves about it. Um, if you haven't heard about it, it's an unspun yarn and you have to um, sign up and become a patron of the, um, um, I'll put, I can't think of the name actually, but um, I'll put the link below. And it just seems like a wonderful company and um, their dyes, they change every time, so they never repeat them. And it's just, I think the people who are into it are just, just absolutely sold on it. Um, but it would help if you lived in Scandinavia, I think. I think it's from, they're from Sweden. Um, anyway, I haven't ordered it yet, partly because of my concern that about the um, mailing and so forth. So if anybody is in the, in the United States and had ordered new to Den and just wants to tell me about their ordering experience, I would love to hear about it. Because if I want to order it, I think I have to either get up really early or it's one of those things where you have to be ready to order. And I'm not good at doing that. I'm never in the right place at the right moment. And there's lots of other things going on in life. Um, but I would love to try out that yarn. So what she uses for her cowl is she uses two strands of Nutadin. Um, and that is an unspun yarn. So, um, but there's no reason you can't use any yarn with that. And um, it might be fun to add in some mohair or, you know, do a nice blend. And, but there's really no reason you couldn't use anything, any size, any needles, because of how her recipe works. So, okay, I think I'm at, the, oh, I'm getting close to the end, but I wanted to mention one more thing. Um, my, uh, one of my viewers, Kat, recommended a book, or mentioned a book that she had read called Raw Material, and it's by Stephanie Wilkes, and I am now, um, two thirds of the way through. And even though I never plan to learn how to shear sheep, I am very, very interested in this book. She talks about being trained how to shear and her experiences working for, uh, with a very small farm and her experiences out. And she has a lot of information about, um, wool and the climate and right now I'm at the part where she's talking about um, climate beneficial wool which is how you um, raise sheep in a way that benefits the climate, cl the climate and captures carbon so if you're if your interest in wool goes beyond the yarn and you're interested in why we don't have more um, fiber mills in the United States, or why these little um, producers can't afford to sell their yarn wholesale, then um, this might be the book for you. So I'm sure that when I finish it, I'll do a more complete review. And um, But right now I have to say, I, even though I normally read um, fiction reading is really where I relax and, and I love getting into the characters. I have really sped through this book. So anyway, thank you so much, Kat, for recommending it. And um, I'd love to have more in-person conversations with people about this kind of thing. So I have just talked and talked without pause. So I am hoping that this will have at least maybe some footage either in between or at the end of this episode. So you might just see if there's some at the end, um, but my editing skills are still growing very slowly. So we'll see. 
Thank you so much for watching. If you want to find me on Instagram or Ravelry, I'm Northwest Knitting. And I hope to see you soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.